What's up, guys? You're welcome to Emacom TV, where we publish news on politics and entertainment. We have another trending news for you today, and the headline here read: Ngige fires another shot at Tinubu, and this time exposes and disgraces him totally. Get ready to be shocked. All right, guys. Before I proceed with today's news. Please, if this is the first time you are watching any of our videos on our channel, there is a red subscribe button below this video. Just go ahead, hit on that red subscribe button, click the bell icon to stay updated with all Nigerians. Alright, here are the news in details. The last is yet to be heard on the brewing war of war of words over the ongoing proof of the suspension of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF Management, an agency under the Ministry of Labor and Employment. The probe is being carried out by the Nigeria House of Representatives. Nigeria Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngege, had, while appearing before the Reps Committee, declared that he was in the same class with the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Asiwaju Bola Tinobu. Daily Post reported that Ngege outburst was in response to a question from the Reps member, James Faleke. However, Mr. Chooks Akuna, the former chief press secretary to Ngige, in a tweet said the minister was not in any way in the same mode as Tinobu. He claimed Ngige begged Tinobu for a car in 20, 2004. But Ngige, then commissioner for information, Chief Charles Amilo, has now come out to debunk the story, urging members of the public to disregard Akuna's claim. Speaking from his country home in Anambra State, Amilo brought a new twist to the report with another claim that Tinubu was taking wristwatches from the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar's hand. According to him, while Dr. Ngige did not move money in bullion van, he was not poor because he became governor in 2003. Amilo, popularly known as Ude Obodo, Maintain that his former boss did not have to beg a Siwaju Bolatinobu to ride or own a car while he was while he had the wherewithal before he became the governor and even fleet of cars, exotic cars, including the sliding open roof Toyota Land Cruiser used to used to ferry Dr. Alex Equeme of blessed memory in into the 1998 just convention of People's Democratic Party PDP, not to talk about when he was a governor. He claimed that Siwaju Tinubu, as a governor, had the habit of taking wristwatches from Tin Atiku's hand, both at the VP's home or at meeting in the villa, as a sign of friendship and affection. He added that Tinubu and Ibori sometimes did the same, but note that they could not afford it. But not that they could not afford it. Amilo said, I was among the aides who were with Ngige anytime he went to Abuja, whether on official assignment or private function, and he never at any time begged his Lagos counterpart for a car. It never happened. Whoever told you that story is lying. On the issue of car, I can remember that French president gave Asiwaju three old 2000 model 280 bulletproof Mercedes Benz. On a visit on Gigi at Abuja, Asiwaju dropped one from Gigi at his Abuja Governor's Lodge for use when in Abuja and in 2005 and kept one in Abuja, one in Lagos. Dr. Gigi used it for five months before he brought it back to Tinobu to give to Olusegu Mimiko, who just resigned from the Federal Executive Council, fact to join them in the anti or passenger third term struggle and had to run against PDP as a Labour Party, you know, uh, governorship candidate in Ondo State, he said. Amilo said, as governor, as governor, Ngege used Mercedes Benz G Wagon, not of choice, not out of choice, but as a result of the turbulent security situation created in Anambra State by Abbasenjo and his cohorts. He recalled that prior to politics, Ngege owned a motor company in Victoria Island, Lagos, known as a SD Motors, a flourishing car company on High Bro Street, Adetokumbo, Ademola Street, Victoria Island, and in the 90s before their movement to Abuja. 
So please, they should stop talking about car, especially about one who owns latest Mercedes-Benz full-time and full-time Toyota. Those peddling the story should go arrest Adotong Gigi. He's not a car freak. Neither is he competing with anybody who is richer. Richer, Amilo said. He insisted that Ngige, before joining politics, was already very wealthy from the medical practice, his motor company, and a vast, quite real estate, you know, a business. According to Amilo, Ngige was a governor at the same time as Tinubu with a security vote and monthly returns of Onicha, Newi traders. He is medical doctor with practice in Lagos before he went into politics. Dr. Ngige lived and practiced in Victoria Island. He is a member of Ikoyi Club. He had a flourishing car shop and real estate businesses. Apart from silent ownership and investment in three, three in, in okay, in an investment in about three of the hydro hospital groups in Ikoyi and Victoria Island, he was either a governor, a senator, and a federal minister between 1999 till date. He always held a, he always held an elective appoint, appointed political office. I know, and we all know rich men take each other's property, particularly cars and rich watches. It was said, Rabangida, when he was president, saw cars in the VI home of the late friend, Dr. Jackson de Mago, Majomi, the public relations guru. Rabangida asked and got Majomi's Jaguar car. I didn't mean Rabangida could not afford a Jaguar car at that time, Amilo said. The former spokesman of Anambra state government said it was sad for Tinubu's group to portray Dr. Ngigi as one who was freaking all over Lagos as governor and had to beg Tinubu for a car. All right, guys, uh, the war of words have uh, intensified between um, Tinubu's camp and uh, Dr. Ngigi. And of course, remember I did a video, and I, of course the video is even trending where Ngige called one of Tinobo's boy Faleke. Faleke was one of the um, panel members that actually interrogated Ngige on why Ngige had to suspend the NSITF member. You know that he did he get presidential order to do that. That was one of the things that actually blew up, and you know Ngige was accused. You know of um, harboring some, you know, uh, motive for doing what he did. And that was what caused the um, the outburst that Gige called Faleke a small boy, that he is in the same class with Tinobu, his own mentor. You get So you shouldn't treat him as such, that he will not allow it. So that was it. That was what actually started the war of words between Tinobu. And that actually went viral you know so now the war of what continued up to today when one of um Tinobu's boy actually slammed Ngige and said that Ngige begged Tinobu for a car Ngige begged Tinobu for a car that was way back 2004 that Ngige begged Tinobu for a car of which um um Tinobu's I mean and Ngige camp responded today and slammed Tinobu's camp, you know. So if you look at the whole of this, you know that um, something is actually going on underground. There is a serious fighting that is going on. Tinobu right now is a nobody in APC. Anybody could just talk to him anyhow, you know. Before you see Ngigi mustering up current, I mean, uh, uh, mustering up courage to attack Tinobu in this magnitude, then you know that the powers that be are with him. So what they're done, they try to whittle down the influence of Tinobu. And of course, you know that Tinobu is rumored to be one of the national leaders of APC. But according to the constitution, there is no provision for another national leader. The only national leader is the president. You get so Tinobu recently, you know, um fell out at he's at loggerhead with the presidency, but he will not reveal the details. He will he will like to play calm. He's playing calm when the CPC faction of you know APC, you get adjacked the APC structure from ACN. You know, so and this is not very good for uh Tinobu because his own campaign. His own ambition, 2023 ambition, is right now, he's hitting a brick wall. 
So guys, that is what is happening right now. APC is divided into different factions. In fact, Ngigi, as I speak to you, Ngigi is in Amechi's camp. He's in Amechi and Aero Fry's camp. So these guys are harboring a 2023 agenda. Very serious one. In fact, the way things are going, guys, if care is not taking, APC is going to split into three by 2023. Is going to split into three. Nobody believed that PDP was going to split. You know, when new PDP was formed by uh, Saraki, Dugara, and um, Tambua, they formed new PDP and they come out of PDP, join APC, and all of that. So, nothing is not impossible. Everything is possible. So, guys, what do you think? Uh, the war of words still continue, and Gige and Tenobu uh, at loggerheads right now. What do you think will be Tenobu's response? You know, he hardly talks. He talks through his own aids. You get it? He hardly talks. What do you think Tenobu is going to do? Do you think it will influence the expulsion of, you know, of um, Ngige? However, Ngige has not done any anti-party activity. If he is having a, if he is having, if he's a loggerheads with Tenobu, you get me? That is not an anti-party activity. So, but what do you think Tenebo is likely to do to Ungige? I want you to drop your comment below.